Okay, this is October's book art session, and we will be making this little book folded uh, jack o' lantern with a tea light candle. And I'll be providing you with, um, I have kits, and I'm providing you with the raffia paper. So you will untwist the paper. And you can cut it down to the width that you want, and you'll wrap it around your little candle to determine the, the length of piece you need. And cut that off. And then I have in your kits, I have um, glue spots that you will stick one on the candle and attach it and wrap this around and put the other glue spot on the other end. Then um, you're going to take a wire that's provided in your kit for this little uh, stem and you'll once again you want to untwist the raffia. And you need a little patience doing that because it, it's twisted rather tightly. So, um, could I have some background untwisting music, please? <laughs> And when you get enough for the wire, all you have to do is put that, put the wire inside and twist it up. And if you just wrap it around your finger, then you'll get a little stem. So now we'll move on to forming the little pumpkin. So you're going to want to take the covers off of your book. And you have a pattern. Now I like to you might be able to get two out of your book. Probably you will. Um, if you want, you can take um, the two pieces and make a, a really um, fatter one, or you can make two separate ones. I like to start having the bottom in line because that gives you a nice flat surface for sitting it on. Okay, now you are going to Trace the pattern on the book. If you like, you can um, take a, a box cutter um, because it will cut through the binding fairly easily. And you can give yourself a, a start through the binding to get, help get you started. You don't have to go all the way through the book. And you don't even have to do this step. You can take, I wouldn't take any more than um, four or five pages. You don't want it to be um, really thick to have to cut through with the scissors. And you're going to cut out now. If you want to save these to do a second one, draw yourself a line across the book and cut the pages through. 
And you can also, to get it out of your way, you can cut off this excess here so you don't have as much to deal with. Um, if you don't care about that and want it out of your way, just remove the pages. Then you can use this as a pattern, your cut, cut ones as a pattern to trace around, or you can put your pattern back in there. Just make sure, put your, hold your pages back over to make sure that they're going to stay in a nice, um, pretty uniform line and lined up with the bottom. And then just work your way through the book taking a few pages at a time. And either getting rid of or folding back your excess pages. And every now and then, as you're doing this, you can make, as you get further into the book, you can make another cut down to help yourself, just to help free the pages as you're working. So after you get through the, the book, cutting your pages with your pattern, you will end up with something like this. or two pieces like this. If you are going to use the two pieces, we're going to hot glue these ends, but rather than try to do it flat and flat this way, you want the centers to be like a little hole on the, the top so that they'll form the nice round shape. And even when you're doing the single one, you want to bring this around and glue your pages, the end ones like that. So we'll do that right now. Put some glue on here. Doesn't have to cover the whole thing. You just want enough to hold it. Bring it around. And lining up my pages. If you see pages that you think are, are sticking out a little further than uh, the others, if you don't like it, it doesn't really matter, but you can trim them off to make them even. So now we're ready to start um, painting. Paint is not provided in your kits, but you can get it at uh, Walmart, I like to use the little apple barrel acrylics. Any kind of acrylic, I like to use these. Um, you can use straight out of the tube or um, you can thin them. I'll be thinning them a little bit with water. And I like to use um, two shades of orange on the pumpkin, but you're it's perfectly fine just to use the, the one shade. So I'm just going to put a, a little bit of this darker one in here. And then I have my lighter orange. The paper towels. Now you don't want to thin it too much and get the pages too wet. So. You can use anything for a paint tray. I save the styrofoam uh, trays from packages of meat and wash them up, and I use them as a paint palette, or these little plastic containers you might get with your carryout meals. Um, they work They work great, too, um, because they come with a cover, and you can save your paint if you're called away and want to continue painting later if you don't want to do this all at one shot. You don't have to paint the entire page. And I recommend going one side of the page. 
I don't didn't come all the way in and then I like to take a piece of paper towel and wipe. When the pages are wet, they like to um, stick together. Um, so I like to blot it off, and that helps it'll dry quicker. And instead of doing the back side, I move through and do all of one side at a time. Now, if you want a, a bit of the uh, darker color, you, you just, um, the two tones, you just mix it in, dip your brush in, and wipe, and work your way through the book. There you go. I like the print on the pages to show it through. That's why I brush it on and then like to wipe it off. If you would like it to be more solid, you can leave it thicker, a thicker coat. You don't have to wipe it off, but I'm warning you, the, keep an eye that your pages don't stick. As you're working through and you have, you're all the way through it, then you're going to go back and come the other way around and start on the back side of the pages that you did. So doing the back side, you just work your way through until you get all the way around doing the other side. And you can just do the edges if you like, or you can do the whole page. Once you're all the way through on both sides, as you, I like to shape it which will be done as you're painting, as you're shaping, you know, put a nice crease that'll help it keep the, keep the shape. And then you can just check, check on the painted pages every so often as it's drying and kind of pull them apart. If a couple of them stick together, it's no big deal. I've got these leaves for you so you can and I've given you some extras so you can have your choice of what you'd like to glue on for the base and for the top piece and attach your little stem. The can your candle will just sit on top. Then you're going to need a face. And I've given you the paper, but I have not provided patterns for this be so that you can create your own face if you want round eyes, triangles, whatever you want for the face on your jack-o'-lantern. Then, that's why I have, um, I like to put a little light into the jack-o'-lantern. So I like to use a toothpick and some yellow paint. And I just put some little accents on them. To look like light shining out. And this will be your com completed little jack-o'-lantern candle holder. The candles, if you're not familiar with the little battery-operated tea lights, there's a little clear plastic tab you'll pull out, and then there's a little on and off switch on the bottom that'll light them up. So there's your little jack-o'-lantern tea light candle holder. Mm -hmm.